Hello everybody, welcome to Comic Line, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. This is where we take a topic and then talk about it for a while. Uh, from the comic book industry, right from the headlines. And uh, most recently, Comixology offered a crazy sale on trade paperbacks. And it caused retailers to lose their freaking minds. How crazy a sale. Uh, things like they were selling Marvel trade paperbacks for a dollar. Oh, wow. What? I can't believe I missed that sale. Yes, me either. I, I, I only heard about it when people were complaining about it. Wow. Uh, apparently it had Who been... Who would complain about this, that? Uh, well, retailers. Ma retailers. Retailers who sell trade paperbacks for <laughs> $24 a pop. Uh, so it had been a month since it first kicked off. This is from a Bleeding Cool article about it. I'll leave the description box down below. A copy of the link for you to find. Mm -hmm. um, since it kicked off, digital comics distributor and publisher Comixology sold, sold hundreds of Marvel Comics collections in digital form for 99 cents week after week for the last month including brand new volumes the same day they were released Ooh. and before comic book stores' doors opened. Oh, my God. Including the wow. most recent Jim Starlin book, Thanos, the Infinity Siblings. Wow. Uh, Comixology's owner, Amazon, also followed sporadically on the Kindle as well. Uh, and then um, at, I think it was C2E2, but uh, there was a... Comic book retailers took to the Diamond Retailer Summit at Chicago during C2E2 last week to voice their displeasure with this. Mm -hmm. uh, they were blaming Marvel for it. They were yelling at the editor-in-chief, C.B. Sabolsky, and said, uh, basically, they should do something about it. Don't they know how business works? Uh, no, they don't. <laughs> uh, we should do something about it. You mean, like, lower our prices? And Sabolsky, to his credit, was like, we don't dictate the like we dictate the price of the trade. Yeah, but, but they pay us. But they pay us. Like they can. Well, they must be taking a loss on that. Obviously, I guess Marvel he said. Well, would... well, it depends because like they only have to buy it the one time. I guess. And, well, like, so well, like, I would buy the license. See, now if that's the case, then people are right to complain. I would say yeah. that's not really fair. Well, they're just gonna. Have, they're trying to make it up in volume. That's yeah, right. I, I would assume that Marvel would would require them to charge for every They do. Mm. And in fact, sale. the the deal was that Comixology paid Marvel to get the to get access the same amount yeah. that they normally paid per book. They just then reduced the price right. on their They're own taking format. a loss. They took a loss. Um, for some reason promotional or I something. guess it didn't it was not explained. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, and then this Wednesday they did it again and new trade collections and hardcovers were discounted to a dollar. Again, how did I miss that? I don't know. <laughs> Did you know about this? Was it one day only? I no, it was over. It was like week after week, different books. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, these were collections like the new Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man's new volumes, uh, Spider Gwen, all the Venom books, like the new Venom series, uh, Venom Verse, uh, mm. Venom versus Carnage from our Good, Bad, and Ugly mm -hmm. episode. Uh, Renew Your Vows, The Scarlet Spider, uh, tons of Wolverine, Deadpool, X-Men books, um, etc. The New Vision book from uh, uh, Tom King. Secret Empire was a dollar. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that was the discount that was offered by Comixology, and rightfully so, I imagine, so, uh, retailers were irate. And they felt extreme, like it was an attack yeah. on, the, on comic book retailers. But why take it up with Marvel? Uh, because you... Yeah. Because, okay. Well, when two siblings <laughs> fight, one of them runs to the parents. Well, like, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, even if the parents it was only the, to do with it. The yeah. reason is because it was a Marvel-specific effort. Oh. It was only Marvel trades. Um, and my guess is... They suspect They Marvel suspected that Marvel was, it. Yeah, was involved in some way. And well, that's not an unreasonable... Maybe they were. If it was just Marvel, that's... Not unreasonable to jump to that conclusion. We'll have to see if, like, maybe in the next couple of months, if there's an exact same DC equivalent. Right, but that's like, that's mm. like, you know, an art retail shop getting angry at the internet because they sell art supplies for less money. Absolutely. Now, that's the thing. It's right. A, like, no all, offense, all things if I don't need equal. it this day, I'm going to order it online. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Buy it here! No, that's <laughs> the thing. Like, it, all things created equally... You know, you go where you have the discounts because, like, it's hard on everybody. Like, yeah. we're all trying to save a buck. Yeah. Um, the retailer's response is understandable, but it's also misplaced. Uh, and they felt that they were attacking, that, that Comixology and Digital was, like, attacking them and undercutting them such that there's no way that they could ever compete. Yeah, so the, the fundamental problem that, that the, the retailers have is that Comixology can do this because... They, even if they're taking like a small loss, like let's say Marvel charges them like three dollars or something, you know. I want, I want to say it's much more, right? Well, whatever yeah. it is, you know, they like it doesn't cost them anything, 
right. other than like that loss. Right. Whereas a retailer has to physically store this physical book yep. and yeah. then take a loss on it to offer like a similar sale. So for them, it's like hurting them. Oh, it right. hurts them in every well, way. This kind of it, it could also thing. be like for them, Comixology also I think has a thing where they have to charge the same price for the floppies. Like they don't get yes. like when the floppies come out, mm. when they come out, because they will go down in price depending on the publishers. Like yeah. some image books, if you go back and look at like archives of them, they'll be less. Mm -hmm. But when they first come out, it's the same cover price as it would be in a brick and mortar store. Which yeah. I've always cried foul at because I'm like, no, I'm agree. not buying right. a book. But, I'm renting a a, a a PDF. No, I well, get you're not it. renting it. You well, I am because if it. Comixology goes out, goes under, all gone. The, who, they're they're gonna, all. They're, I bet they'll probably give you a download link. They'll probably give me a download link. I would link. hope. Jeez. But, and I could read them only through their thing, though. Yes. Like, I can't, like, yeah. change the, the file type. Right. I think where Comixology is able to make its money is in their floppy sales yeah. because they don't have the same overhead. Right. They have a different type of overhead, you know, keeping up the digital store and all that stuff. But if you are. If you're a comic book reader, and this is funny, I, I've met plenty of readers who don't know that there's a digital. <laughs> Me outlet, too. Right? Yeah. Or like new readers, right? But like now there's like these dollar sales and now mm -hmm. people are talking about it. And right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, oh, Comixology, I'll check this out. Yep. Buy a couple of things. Now I have an account. Maybe I don't want to go to the store one day. Right. You know, like, so this could have been an effort for them to get some publicity yep. and to just bring in new customers. Yep, it's true. I mean, and I expect it won't last. With the trade, yeah, how yeah. much are they normally discounted? Uh, it depends on what they are. Like, Comixology has odd sales yes sometimes they'll be like if, if there's a big event that's written by a particular author yeah they'll take that author's run and make those discounted and they'll discount them by like they're still deep you know it's not like 10 percent or 23 no or sometimes whatever. you'll see a lot of them like a 24 dollar book for like eight dollars yes mm -hmm. it's still a discount and it's right. still a good number particularly for a newer book yeah right um and and then and that varies sometimes they'll do it when there's like a movie that comes out like a whole bunch of random like trades from that or some that are about that character about that character are now discounted. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they also do like manga sales too. Oh yeah. So like they have that going on as well for them. Yeah. So they've got like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. that reminds me of um, Amazon does does that too, where they'll sell digital like music and stuff for very cheap, well, like for a couple days it's only. It's funny you whatever. mention that because, because Amazon owns Comixology. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Oh, I didn't know it, that. They didn't originally. Now, my guess is that the reason they can take such deep discounts on these n numbers and not even negotiate with Marvel, just go, yeah, you, we're, here's, your, here's your money, yeah. we're going to put the books up, and yeah. they're uh, they're practically free, Yeah. Um, is because they're subsidized by Amazon. Right, which is hilarious because yeah. it's like, you got the retailers who are angry at Comixology for undercutting them. Comixology is undercutting its own parent company. Yeah. Because it's not like Amazon doesn't sell trades. Right. Amazon for sells sure. their own books. Right. At but discount. Again, physical books, though. Yes. Right. And Amazon might have calculated, though, that they will make more in the long run oh, yeah. if they get more people buying the floppies yeah. via Comixology. Yeah. And yeah. they will lose from sales of their trades. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, I, wouldn't, I would bet, in fact, that that's what they're doing. I would also think... They might be trying to drive, uh, you know, Stores. their competition under. They're a gigantic company. Yeah, like, big companies tend to try to drive their competition it, out of business. It's like, not like Amazon didn't declare war on Borders, of Barnes and right, Noble, exactly. Brentano's, and yeah. just it, the brick and mortar stores are nothing if not bookstores. Yeah, they sell they comic stores. Books. Yeah, they're bookstores that somehow have continued to survive when all others have. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, and it's died. and it's odd because they're always besieged by problems and plights. Yeah, they are uh, provided their books through only one distributor. It mm -hmm. is a full on monopoly. There mm -hmm. is no protection there. Mm -hmm. They are beholden to that entirely. So they have a lot of like stringent requirements when it comes to refunding books or to get the variant covers they have to order yeah that's insane obscene yeah. numbers yeah. in order to qualify to get them mm -hmm. yeah. uh, take there lots of risks delays on their orders and of course like let's say that like there's a there's a blizzard and it really hits this one county but it doesn't hit this other county and i live in like the, between those two counties and i my regular store is where the blizzard hit and you didn't get your books this week, well, I'll just go to the other store mm -hmm. and get my books there. Or even like, yeah. not, you may have gotten your books, but I don't want to make that drive. Yeah. There was a blizzard. Well, then I'll go <laughs> online. Um, my, my point is about there's no brand loyalty. Yeah. And there's right. no store loyalty. Right. But Unless, like, you know that owner. Even if you do, they don't care. Like, people do Some care people about the retailers. Do. And yeah. they Some, do, but... especially if you have a pull list. Right. And yes. pull lists are some of the ways that retailers try to mitigate some of right, their losses. And continue to exist. Yes, social pressure <laughs> yeah. and yes. and and uh, but you know. 
There's comfort. But the problem yeah. with those is that there's... It's not like they take your credit card number and then charge you. Sometimes they do. Okay. Really? But like yeah. most of the stores that we've gone to, it's not like they do that. It's no. all on trust. Yeah, right. it's an honor you got to show up and pay. Yep. Yeah. I love the idea. You didn't come this week, but I still charged you. Yeah. I'm holding your books. Well, oh, yeah. No. And that's... But but it, that would be fair because they're doing work for you. They're getting you these issues. Well, they're also... For they're you. paying the distributors who send that copy right. on the promise that you're coming to get it. Yeah, right. Because if you don't, now they just have to eat it or find someone else to buy that's it. That's exactly right. And most people do. don't. Yeah. Like, especially a, after the fact. It's an entirely flawed system. Yeah. It's yeah. a system that, by all rights, shouldn't even exist anymore. And now they're complaining that a system that has been working really, really well for the last 10 years is seeking to provide the inevitable like i get yeah, it like put the final nail in the coffin right and like a lot of i've seen a lot of different retailers um who are whinging about all the changing winds and the, the the wars that are declared against them and i've seen very very select but very very specific and uh open retailers that are like like any business that is encountering new technologies or new competition, we have to reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the comic book stores that you remember from 20 years ago, there are many of them. I still see some of them, but but every year they go out of business. Every year I see more and more comic book stores going out of business. Right, there's attrition. There. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is mostly due to the fact that there are a lot of different comic book retailers who either like don't know how to run a business at all mm -hmm. who decided to just create a business to sell right. their inventory and yeah. then and, and and they did it in the 90s so they were able to keep their overhead low right there was enough interest mm -hmm. that they yes. didn't have to be that efficient right. or good at it or they were the victims of you know like um, another store or uh, or digital or whatever explanation you want to offer and then there's that very small group of people who are like, I reinvented myself. Mm -hmm. We're not just a comic book store. We mm -hmm. sell, like, I remember seeing my comic book store start to lean away, not lean away from comics, but start to morph into a card hobby shop that mm -hmm. sold, like, the, when I was, like, much younger, there were Pokemon cards, they were yeah. Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah. And, and things like holding tournaments. Well, and holding yes. tournaments still, is a newer thing that the, I see. That's still the same thing. Yes. Pokemon but it, and Magic the Gathering. Yeah, yeah, they're they're still, yeah. But they also, but they, but, then, just, but they then take their, their space and turn it into a tournament space oh, yeah. where they have yeah. the card tables or, and they pay by the, they rent by the hour. And right. Like, you or know. you'll see the shop that now is selling more toys than ever before. Yep. Fun statues, are a huge Funko thing. Funko Pops are The statues, since they've upped their game, that's a huge seller yep. for them. Because it's like, it's one thing, and that that's a difference. Like, it's one thing to see it online. It's another thing to see it in person. Yes. You can make a true decision about that. Now, unfortunately, you have the internet in your pocket. Right. So after you've seen it, Ooh, that was cool. Purchase for 20% less. It's the Best Buy problem. People come in and they look at electronics and then they look, okay, well, I'll go home and buy it on Amazon. Yeah. Or I'll buy it right now. Yeah. In yeah. front of you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know how Best Buy solved that problem? This is a little bit of a tangent, but like, no, no. they rent space in Best Buy to companies to showcase their stuff. That's like, exactly right. We're a showroom? Okay, let's act like a showroom. Let's yep. charge yeah. people who want to show off their stuff and then sell it from some other mechanism so we make money either oh, way. I've wanted really to, good I wanted to buy a keyboard and I wanted to buy it now. So yeah. I went to the Best Buy yeah. and the only keyboards that were available was one brand that had taken up residence in right. the Best Buy right. mm -hmm. and that keyboard was like $50. And I'm like, yeah. I guess I'll just live without a keyboard until it comes to my house purchased on Amazon. Yeah. Like, that is the case, or Newegg, or any other competitor. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like renting out space, that's a good point, and I'd like to get back to it, because I was like wondering, asking the devil's advocate question, like... How I, do you combat it? I don't want to live How in a world without comic book stores. No, sure. I, I love going to them, and the fact is, like, the, the ones that are most successful for me are the ones that actually actively show their back issues. Yes. Mm. Because, like, here's the thing, like, sure, you can get those online, but, like, I'm not going to sort through like all of Comixology's inventory right. yeah. just to yeah. like see what's it's there. I want to, I want to just, I want to, yeah, I want to yeah. go through it. And if yeah. I'm looking for a run, that means I already have it in like floppies. So right. I want that other single, you yeah. know? And also I, there's like a, there, there's, a, there's a, there's a, there's a little bit of a hunt aspect yeah. of yeah. it being like joy of discovery and, and maybe finding like a, like a key book yeah. that you didn't think was going to be in there and it's mm -hmm. worth more. So it's like, yeah, I can get like this key issue of the night Gwen Stacy died for 99 cents. Sure. But like, what if I found it? Mm -hmm. well, also, think about the exploration portion of it. Yeah. Like, I'm looking at a bunch of different books, and then I come across something that I may have never read before. That's true. It my yeah. If I'm looking yeah. for digital floppies, I'm looking for something specific. I'm yeah, not like necessarily... You do a search. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not necessarily looking through all of them, because there's yeah. thousands, but a long box may have thousands, but it's a little more compartmentalized, a little mm -hmm. easier to leaf through. I also find that newer books are easier to read digitally than older books. I've agreed to that. Because, like, yeah. older books just... I, I don't know if it's something with the, the printing or the scans that they have, 
have of them. It's just mm. not quite as good, and I, I find it like it's a little more difficult. I've noticed that the coloring, uh, either it's been updated, yeah, and it's done slipshod, yeah, or they don't update it and it looks bad because it's blown up. Right. Well, think about uh, the yeah. fact that yeah, you, you, they scanned this like maybe ten years ago. I already scanned it once. I'm not scanning it again. I've never, like, I've never seen um, an initiative behind like digital restoration of old comics yeah right um, if i do see it i've seen basically it's a scan yeah. or uh of a like new print usually they had to make another trade of it and if right. that's the case it's usually done of course it's making a trade on the cheap yeah the lowest common denominator oh yeah and and i think that i know we're gonna no actually i'll wait for this okay we're gonna get into that i, I think that's all right we'll make sure we do because okay. i want to talk about that but like so uh because I'm, I'm i actually we are gonna switch gears so you can bring up that no go ahead okay because i was gonna say like okay so we talked about the issue where Digital, I think it is. I think we can all agree that this comicsology discount is an attack on brick and mortar retailers. At least in some, even I don't if they know don't, if it's like even if they don't mean for it I mean, to be. It's, it's not like there's no Napoleon over it. Right. I was going to say, like, I don't know if it's a like mustache twirling. Fire. Like, yeah, no. Uh, see, like, I don't know if it is, but I think it could be. You, you think know. there's a guy in an office somewhere? Like, yes. Yeah, his name's Jeff yes. Bezos. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I absolutely think Amazon. Was okay. like, okay, we've, we've destroyed even... Brentano's now. But I can't, all right, but see, there's a difference between them, like, going after Borders and Barnes and Noble. Those They're are big. two large companies, right? Yeah. There's only two of them, though. Right, but, like, I mean, like, there were just physically two of them. They were all over the But there's the only place. two companies. Yes. Is my point. Like, well, there were every, well, like, there's, there's, but, there's but they, hundreds of comic book stores. But didn't just go after those companies, though. They went after every bookstore. Yes. Right. Yeah, even though smaller mortar. bookstores, yeah. You didn't hear about it because you didn't know the name of a bookstore in, you know, Weehawken. But no, like, that's true. They but, went out of business just the same as Borders did. Right. But there are no large comic book stores, like a chain there that's are, true everywhere. There are it's chains, true. but they're not, like... There's no Mile High Comics in New Jersey or on the East Coast at all. Well, what, so, I, was, yeah, what I was thinking was that, it, like, for them, yes, like, the other small brick and mortars, when they went after bookstores, were just kind of, like, collateral damage mm -hmm. because they were going after two larger companies, yeah. right? One of which somehow made it out for yeah. the time being. Yeah, They adapted. They adapted. They did. Yeah. I don't know how. It looks exactly the same as it did 10 years well, ago. They, they, they also have the online. They have the stores. online. They yeah. put a Starbucks in there. Yeah. There's like yeah. a Starbucks no. in every Barnes and Noble. It's more like an experience going there. Yeah. Right, which is yeah. what the successful and it's a show stores yeah. is. It also... Like, yeah. And they have chairs. I think it also... They probably make a lot of money in terms of um, people who desperately need a book right now or a yes. gift. Mm -hmm. And also in the kids section. Mm -hmm. Because you bring a kid there, you're not leaving without buying that kid a book. Not only yeah. that, but because there's a Barnes and Noble where we live. Yeah. And that Barnes and Noble, I'm sure all of them, have... I remember uh, a good 10 years ago they really upped their dvd section dvds and now toys it's toys games, games. Yeah. like yeah. all the same shit i could get at a GameStop that aren't video games i could probably get at a barnes and noble yeah. well for a good 25 percent more actually, by the way that's another conversation <laughs> but um but in terms of like the comic book companies or stores of, but yeah, the brick and mortars it's just weird that they would suddenly declare war on individual tiny stores that's kind of hard you know well, what i mean like yeah, yeah. I, I i think it's more yeah. I would argue that Amazon did declare war on the mom and pop stores, not directly, yeah. but as a group, it was more like, well, I'm taking all the of the comic books, yes. wherever they shop, if they're buying physical books... I'm taking them. Yes. But only I don't care Marvel. who you are. Well, right now, only Marvel. Well, no, I'm Let's saying, see if it's worth I'm it. saying looking back in time at, at Borders and all the, you know, the books, regular bookstores. Oh, okay. Oh, you could interpret that as they were waging war on the mom and pop stores. Jeff Bezos didn't know about Granny's, you know, book barn, but he did know that he was destroying, undercutting the business book, yeah. of anonymous to yeah. him, yes, uh, companies, and he could be and and basically saying, "I'm taking the the we the class them. of of uh, item mm -hmm. that you buy in a store. I'm taking it." here yeah. yeah you know and you could look at this the same way perhaps right. like mm -hmm. they are consciously knowing that yeah there are gonna be uh Casualty. customers who are going somewhere else who they want to come here right yeah. and then you also have the the customers who simply don't have access to a comic book store yes and that's not even just because it went into business they just live in an area where they don't have them or it's like a mm -hmm. 10 mile drive and they just don't they don't have the, the gas money or the time yeah. to dedicate to it because comic book stores have Odd hours, I can't, you know, maybe they're not open when I'm done with work. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, that in and of itself, it's like, you can't blame people like that who are just no. like, what am I going to do? Yeah, what are my options? Also... I'm not going to order it from you. Like, like I'm not going to order 
My my floppies. Right. Yeah. But What's arguably <laughs> though they already know out of necessity about comicsology and we're already Some of them do and some of them don't. Yeah. And some people still want a floppy. Like they still want a physical True. copy yes. of a book. Right. Yeah, collectors or just people who like the the, the, the tangibility of a comic or the portability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've noticed uh, we're we're also not addressing the fact that the comic book industry and by extension the comic book retail audience, the people who are buying comic books, is comparatively significantly small. Mm. When it comes to the book buying group yes. yeah. and then the comic book buying group. Like yeah. we're talking about, we're dealing in numbers that are like maybe $10 million. We're not talking about like the the millions, right. the many millions, right. the hundreds of Like I don't see Jeff Bezos being like, I'm no. going to get it. But I do see <laughs> uh, this being a water testing moment where it's like, but what if the comic book industry could be a tens of millions of dollar industry. What if we did sure. expand enough where n- now we've reduced the amount of searching for comic book stores. We've reduced the, we've made it accessible to the point where, I mean, like there's a comic book, there, I used to think that comicsology was only available on tablets, but you could also get it on your phone much mm-hmm. like earlier than you could. But like the bigger your phones, the more readable your comic books are. Like you can literally bring your comics anywhere you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't have to have a clunky yeah. Tablet and you can download them directly to the tablet, so you don't actually have to be connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah, like if I'm at home, I'll or like if I'm at work or whatever, I'll download a bunch of comics and I just have them there and I can read them wherever. Cause yeah, I don't need internet yeah. connection any longer. Yeah, like the that. versatility is key. Yeah, and uh, and so maybe making it like so if you ever wanted to read a comic book, there's no excuse not to now because you could just literally buy it. At any point, yeah. they're dirt cheap. Mm-hmm. They look great, and they work on any device you own. Your right. monitor, your television. Right. So you can cast comics to your TV. Untapped audience. Yeah. Exactly. Perhaps, and let's find out yeah. if there is one by making arguably one, the the number one recognizable comic book company out there because it's got the Infinity War movie right now. Right. Um, right. And and just use them. As a testing ground to see like the potential. Yeah. Make all these comics that are huge and very expensive and, and numerous and have lots of pages dirt cheap. But that's for people that already know of comicsology. Well, hopefully they'll also know You're through Amazon. Maybe for well, word of mouth. That's what I'm thinking. I'm wondering if they're reaching out to like Amazon Prime members or people that have a subscription. I don't know. That are already paying for stuff to be like, hey, go on Comixology. You pay us for Prime. Well, now you get like uh, two or three. I have not books. seen a Prime deal with Comixology. No. no, but they did used to do because some of the trades before they bought Comixology, they had digitally. So if you had Prime, you had that whole Kindle library thing. Right. So you could download a trade through that. I don't know what happened to that after the Comixology acquisition. No, I don't either. When was the Comixology? Uh, uh, Amazon got Comixology, I think within the last year or so. Ah, uh, okay. See, to me, then, yeah, definitely not a coincidence that they're doing this. Because, really, what are they doing? They're adapting tactics that Amazon already used. Right. You don't even have to think of anything. The idea already existed yeah. to <laughs> d- heavily discount random, you know, items. Pockets of... And then someone says, oh, that's only a dollar. I'm going to grab that right now yeah. and get the people into the habit of mm-hmm. going to Comixology. No, Especially cool. since they're not actually buying a physical thing. Yeah. It's also uh, a great way to circumvent the diamond problem. Like, maybe it, maybe it is an Amazon tactic. Maybe it is an Amazon directive to corner the comic book market. Or suggestion. Or suggestion. Uh, or memo. It strongly <laughs> suggests a borderline on directive. Yeah. Maybe it Jeff says, Bezos is just a giant comic book fan. He's like, I we don't have a monopoly on the market! Yeah. I mean, it's cause, not fair! Because it could be, like, he's like, okay, well, Diamond controls the physicals, mm-hmm. but Comixology controls the digitals. Mm. And so, as such, let's make everybody just want digital more. Mm-hmm. And then when Diamond inevitably falls, we'll acquire that too. Oh, and yeah. Now and we'll then make, I'll have it all. And then I'll have all the I'll comic I'll make money both, both ways. Yeah, and then yeah. Amazon becomes the number one comic book distributor. Right. Which would be something to fear, I think, because anytime you have one company running Oh, well, like, well, well, I don't think we'll be... Happening now. Be no, yeah, we'd be like, it's no difference. Yeah. Like, we would, be... we, the only thing we'd, we'd miss are these crazy discounted Comixology sales. <laughs> right, but that's good for consumers, right, because they are competing. You don't want to. You know, it's almost like you don't want them to be too successful because yeah. as long as they have to fight with each other, mm-hmm. we get deals. But it's barely competing. They're underselling them so much. Well, there is no competition, right? And that's that's and the, that's the fear that's and the, the, danger, the complaint. And that's the legitimate part of the complaint. But, I think. I wonder if the whole if you buy a physical comic, you get the digital download link. Mm-hmm. That kind of going away is in some way connected to uh, Comixology's like branching out, branching out because Marvel has their own thing. Uh, which is uh, Marvel Unlimited. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you pay a subscription fee and you get access to their digital library. Ah. So does Comixology. Well, yeah. Comixology has a special unlimited style thing, yes, too. Yes, they do. Where you, you pay like a monthly... Mm-hmm. Is yeah. it it's like the same price? I don't know. That I don't know. but Because uh, that I mean, would be interesting if you're paying for like just Marvel... Or you can pay the same price and get for everything. Right, NBC. but like it depends because they can switch up what's involved with it, and mm-hmm. sometimes you also get like discounts Netflix. on things. Like yeah. I noticed just recently when I was browsing, um, actually this last Wednesday, or yesterday, last week for you people watching, <laughs> um, that like there are underneath some of the books I was looking at. It says like you know whatever the name of it is, like save fifteen percent, save ten percent. Like if I had that, I'd save money on each individual issue I bought. Oh, that could be their way of undercutting the problem where like they have to charge. The yeah. same amount as the brick and mortar, but you're still chart like you know, like if you were buying a lot digitally, it might end up helping you in the in the long run yeah. to pay that monthly fee. Mm-hmm. Right, but that depends. You just like do the math on that one. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but the Marvel thing that would make that makes me think even less that like Marvel had anything to do with this. Yeah. They have their own service. Right. Yeah. They're like, actually, we're hurting too. Like, yeah. <laughs> we don't give away our trades for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, that said, you do get access to their like huge library. But like we said, it's not everything. Well, not only is it not everything, but like the older books don't look as good digitally. Yeah. So, like, what am I really paying for? Unless I'm trying to catch back up of the last fifteen to twenty years of comics, in which case, like, it looks okay. Yeah. yeah. Where do you guys see this going? Uh, it's it looks. It looks, it looks grim. It looks grim. grim. It does for, look for grim. Brick and mortar. For brick and mortar. And yeah. for retailers. Especially like for all of us. for brick and mortars that don't adapt. Because right. you before mentioned... Or the you, handful. Well, I was going to say, so one of you mentioned GameStop. Yeah. And yeah, how exactly. like kind of irrelevant they've become. Except but, most GameStops have partnered up with ThinkGeek. And so mm-hmm. where, like, we have one ThinkGeek store that I know of, and it's, like, actually over in New York. So yeah, it's a, drive it's a pain out to get to. And, like, the Palisades Park Mall or whatever it is. But now I can just go to a local GameStop and I can ke- ke- check out some of the ThinkGeek products there. Yeah. I have actually bought more ThinkGeek products from there than I would have online because I can see them. Yep. And they're about the same price. And or I have to pay for they're shipping. on clearance. Which yes. a lot of the yeah. ThinkGeek stuff had been over the last month or so at GameStop. Yeah. I got a sweet snack bowl for $8.00. It was worth every penny. Yeah. Yeah. Every penny. Can confirm. Yes. yes. It's great. <laughs> so good. But yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. They adapted. Well, GameStop, yeah, they're like... They're like, Amazon's destroying us. Right. Because, and like, rightfully so, by the way, yeah. because your trade-in policy sucks. Well, it does. And your used games things. are garbage. It's very true. But, like, especially when Amazon was able to start taking pre-orders on games. Well, first of all, don't pre-order games. <laughs> um, but secondly, when Amazon started taking pre-orders and you'd get it shipped to your house the day it came out. Oh, yeah. It was Instead just like, to pick it up. game yeah. Yeah. I don't even have to get out of my house. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm could still it, on my underwear. Could you and... download it to my machine? <laughs> like... <laughs> Technically, you can. Well, yeah. I don't know if you, they can. I have purchased things from the PlayStation Store because digitally, mm-hmm. that only was available digitally from work, and then like told it to download to my system. Uh, so when I come home, it's there. I'm just the like, oh. <laughs> that's great. I like that it's connected. It's just like, no, I'll just turn it on to download that. Yeah, that's and fine. I'll do the updates too. Like yeah. so that when you get home, it's like waiting for you. I'm like, <gasps> an obedient pet. Thank you. Hello, oh. TV. <laughs> Would you like to turn me on? No. Uh, uh, I'll just play it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, uh, but, like, again, like, you see, like, adaptation. And, like, yeah. if comic book brick and mortars were a chain, it would be easier to make a brand deal yeah, like that. That's like, the problem. Like, if Midtown Comics was the only comic book store that existed... Like, In across, New York. Or, or like, yeah. across the U.S., yeah. Oh, yeah. they could have, like, done a whole, yeah. like, deal with ThinkGeek. Yes. Yeah. And you'd go there and be like, this is my nerd pop culture headquarters And now. you would know, when you go to the comic book store, you know what you're getting. Because yes. Because it's a franchise. As opposed and, to any individual brick and mortar where right. it could be great or garbage. Right. right. And that's but the unfortunately, They're not Best Buy. They're not GameStop. You don't know what you're yeah. getting. But you're it's, I do like the idea of the independent owner. I like the idea of someone owning their own business. Well, Big franchises, they, they kind of do. Sort yeah, that's of. yeah. They get subcontract. Well, yeah. they do, but they also have mandates where they're not allowed to do certain things. Yep. Yes, yeah. and they're the individual control. comic book store can suddenly like, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna have a huge sale. Yeah, like what I'm if we take lo- care of all these? Yeah, things. what if they did franchise out and then suddenly we lose that like those dollar bins that I really like? Yeah, yes, we, we probably would. I mean that the thing that happened. To, look. Old mom and pop electronic stores don't exist. Right. Best Buy found a way to survive that can only possibly work for a national and franchise. It won't and work we, for much longer. Right. Well, <laughs> arguably they might be in trouble too. Somehow, but, Radio Shack still exists. Not around here. Yeah, they barely. Oh, no, but exist. like there's there are still stores. There's I don't still know around. They, again, they're another franchise. But like again, the mom and pop ones they didn't survive and they 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 couldn't survive. Right. And I don't think that 
comic book stores can't. It's sad yes. to lose those businesses, but it also seems to be inevitable. So if they want to exist in any form, some sort of like franchise yeah. type or, or you know national brand yeah. association yeah. Like, might comic help. book stores are only forty years old. Right. Oh. As a you mean as a business as an entity? As a yeah. Thing. Yeah. Well, and that would be interesting if like one comic book person or whatever decide to start buying up stores yes. and turning them into something into like that franchises. offering the owner it hasn't happened. the opportunity to manage the store but yeah. being like yeah. we got to get our stuff together right there. like the retailers should the, the retailer summit how about instead of throwing tomatoes at the editor in chief of marvel you get together <laughs> and start talking about how you're going to survive yeah and like i know that every comic book store in every region has their own little private conversations Particularly in our neck of the woods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the comic book stores talk to each other. Yeah. And they all help each other out with their inventory. Not their comic book availability, but sometimes they're like, how many copies did you get? Like, I needed, like, I I, I didn't didn't anticipate the draw of this book. Mm -hmm. Can you help me out? Um, I I couldn't afford to order as many bags or boards. They help each other out and they'll, like, trade and do, do favors for each other and whatnot because they know that, like... They're dealing in the tens of thousands of dollars and not in the millions, and so like but there's it's no also reason. But the barter to... system at that point. Sometimes, I mean, like sometimes it's like for money, and sometimes it's for like favors, or sometimes it's for <laughs> like more inventory. Uh, but they do. For favors. They're, they're practically favors. part of a like a comic book retailers union yeah, as yeah. it is. Yeah. It's more like an honorary brotherhood that is secretly trying to put the other one out of business anyway. Because right. like, why would but I ever I help you. my enemy? Right. Like, and it's because you don't make enough money to sustain your business as it is. Right. Like you have to work together. Two of you are stronger than one. All yeah, separately. That's right. Yeah. And and so maybe the franchisement is the way to go. Like but you need formal. I was gonna say, Think Geek should version. just do it. Yeah, Think Geek just buy all the comic book stores, or the ones that are worth a damn. Yeah, like the they, ones that, that they go around might and evaluate. Survive. Yeah, and, then and they... let the other ones die. Because the fact is, like, you can't like pass a legislation that says like all comic book stores will be owned by this one company. No, right. like you have no, to, they they have, have to go out and no, buy key have to stores. Go and there'd be whole like you know conversations and all that. Yeah. The fact is, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I was gonna, I'd love it if someone complains, I'd be like, but that's a, com- a, a monopoly on comic books. Like, right. Diamond already has that. Exactly. Man. Like, yeah. Uh, maybe solve we should, that problem Maybe first. we should also point that out. Exactly. No, I agree. Like, because that would be a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, a monopoly on comic book well, stores. I don't think they'd all sell. No. And oh, so, no. Like, it, wouldn't, oh. it wouldn't be really necessarily an issue. You know, it's funny. Or they wouldn't go after all of them, so it's still not a monopoly. No, it's true. Like, the bad ones, the, the ones that you avoid or that you've, like, never heard of. I mean, I'm sorry. There's some that you've never heard of that are great. Mm-hmm. But, like, the ones that you, that you, that you know to avoid, they're not going to get picked up. Or if they are, they're only going to get picked up so that they can be gutted and turned into, regular, into like, yeah. into pop culture shops. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's no mechanism to stop it from happening because... Best Buy is the only national electronics retailer left. Yeah, really. uh, you know Barnes and Noble is the only national. There's book a retailer books left. a million, and it's trying to gain speed. But there you go. So there's a little one. There's a little one. Everyone knows of, and exactly. the same thing could easily happen. Oh yeah, for comic know, books. With, with comic books, and you know what's funny? Like niche... In the books a million, they sell floppies. Yes. Oh yeah. But by the yeah. way, they can't oh. give them away. Uh, I was just at the books a million the other day. Yeah. In their clearance section, all of their independent floppies are a dollar. And they're just in a shoebox on the floor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we've lost her. Yeah. It's come back. Yeah. Kadoosh, yay! Yeah, they're a dollar. At the Books a Million, where everything is at least 25% more than you could get anywhere else. Yeah. Sorry, Books a Million. It's true. Now, okay. I'm not signing up for your loyalty card. So, in terms of retailers being upset about this, and by the way, I don't think any of us are saying that like we want the, to see them going, like, no. that we want to see Brick and Mortar going out of business, that we want to necessarily see them being franchised because we know that can ruin it, but it's yeah. just, here are some thoughts. Yeah, we, we want to see you survive in some yes, fashion. Yes, yes. So, yeah. At the source, though, the retailer should truly, in my opinion, be angry at the publishers for the cost of trade paperbacks. Yes. Because, like, whatever it is that they're charging them, that cover price... Is outrageous. It's ridiculous. Mm. And it depends on the publisher. Because, again, and I've said this a million times beforehand, you look at an image trade, most of them are $10 or $15. That's totally worth it to me. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's like, not like the printing is a less quality. No. And like really what it is for them is like, you know that like image is kind of taking a little bit of a hit. If you didn't buy it in the floppies. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to, it, usually they're between, I want to say like four to five, maybe six issues that are in there. Right. Those issues are usually about three to $4. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you had four of them in there, twelve dollars—that's the cost of it. That's yeah. kind of what they're selling it for, yeah. Yeah. if not less than that, for, yeah. especially for a first volume, which is usually about ten dollars. 
But Image understood that they're like, are you missing in floppies? You were never going to buy it in floppies. Right. So I'll let, I don't care. Yeah. That, just that's, give me your money. I'm not going to get that money. Right. I can always get some money. Right. If but, I make an attractive price point. Yeah. Exactly. But retailers know they can't, unfortunately, make their money off of independent trades because there aren't enough independent yeah. readers out there. Yeah. And the big two don't care. Like, for the same amount of issues, they're going to cost, like, they're going to charge you anywhere between, like, $18 and $25. The fact is, Comixology sales are hurting brick and mortar stores. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. But I'd like to know the numbers. I need to know yeah. who, how many people are subscribing to Comixology and how and what the sales figures are like at re, like across the board at retailers right. which is of course you. Impossible, impossible to get yeah. like oh i need to get oh i just need an inventory of every single comic book store in the united states <laughs> and then find out what their numbers are over yeah. a over a period of let's say 6 months yeah. and then go to comic sellers and say oh, give me your sales figures for the next 6 yeah, months we'll which compare them will. which they never will and of course it's all relative based on like region demographic yeah. income level uh, you know availability yeah. you know and so so it's impossible to decipher and in fact there's no way to read Really, truly determine whether or not it's actually doing what we're saying it's doing. It would right. be amazing to yeah. see mm-hmm. this become an independent study, right? Yeah, like <laughs> do all we, of those things. Yeah. And just be like, no, I, I, I would love to see I'm that. That would be cool. This now. It, it would be hard. Look at Apple. Apple never talks about their numbers. No, why? It's a strategic too. decision. Yes, it's a strategic decision because people, their competitors, would love use to know it to determine like how far can you push it. Yeah, Comicsology, how far can you push this one dollar yeah. sale before? Right. It's cutting too but much, I pos- into, and then they could plan around it. They don't want you to be able to plan around it. No, it's it. true. I, I, I still submit that the Comixology Marvel $1 trade sale is a fact-finding endeavor. It has nothing to do with like bringing in new readers or raising awareness of Marvel or anything like that. I think it is just for them to see how many people they can pull in to the digital market and to the comic book reading market. Well, I'd like to see the also pursuit of what future? Oh, the future of dominating the comic book. So, what like, would they do with the information? Oh, they go to make um, more money later. They go well. Uh, Comicsology normally because they have their figures. Comicsology normally sells this many trades uh, due to the Marvel thing or this many Marvel trades mm-hmm. uh, due to the sale uh, you know, or this many Marvel trades and this many trades in general. Uh, based on the sale figures of the Marvel one dollar trade, we actually wound up tripling the amount. It means that there is actually, because that's the other thing, whereas comic book fans and collectors who go to a store might buy three or four copies of the same book to collect, I'm not buying more than one copy of a digital copy. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So the sales figures are more accurate and you can say, well, if we've tripled the amount of readers, now we know, or the triple amount of the amount of buyers, yeah. now we know, or we can assume that there's triple the audience that we can sell to. And we can get their attention based on these sales. So now, when we do it for DC, we can see if either it's the Infinity War effect, or if it's a brand loyalty, Mm -hmm. or if it's an awareness, or if it works across the board. And then if that's the case, then we can dominate both markets of of both uh, (laughs) uh, publishers, and then do it again, and then find out how much the whole pie is worth, and then, uh, you know, sweep in and just, like, and just cancel the... the, the, the... Because the only reason why digital books cost the same amount as a physical book is because they are being nice. Well, I assume, isn't that from the publisher? From the publisher? I don't know if they have to do that. I don't know if it's... Because when mm-hmm. Comixology first came on the scene, retailers immediately cried foul. Right. They were like, oh, well, they'll never come here because uh, I've betrayed the fallacy of having a retail store so that no one ever wants one. <laughs> and it's like... Right. They almost didn't have enough confidence. They didn't have enough confidence in their own in business. Their own business that people want physical stuff. Yeah, they already were starting to yell about it and they hadn't even come on the scene yet. I remember this because I, I was there at, at, at was New York Comic Con when Comixology opened. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know because I talked to the president of the company about what they were doing. And I was like, I don't know if it's going to work. So anyway, the, the, the fact is, like, uh, retailers were already complaining about it back then, mm-hmm. and they didn't have enough confidence in it then. And, like, so, yeah. like. Do you think that at that time, because they sold so much merchandise for Marvel and DC, that they were able to get Marvel and DC to yes. come to an agreement? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. They're like, okay, okay, we don't want to piss off oh. these people who sell so many of our books, so we're going to force yes. Comicsology to that's sell exactly what happened. a cover price. That happened to such a degree... 
that comicsology was forced or felt forced or compelled mm -hmm. to create Legally. a comic book retailer system yeah where if this. you were a comic book retailer you could create a storefront through comicsology yeah. thereby creating a fifth middleman in uh -huh. your in your system from comic book creator to 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 customer mm -hmm. where like i get a little bit of this if i sell through the comicsology store by the way that's dead of course it is. They threw that of out. Of course it is. Like, that doesn't make any sense. They they, yeah. they allow they had a small window of time where they did it. Then they closed the window, and then every retailer that goes to business, they just close it and destroy it and delete any any evidence of it existing. Like I wonder. I actually haven't even checked if it's still in business. Now. I don't. I bet it's not because yeah. they didn't have to do that. I think they just did it so they would all. They did it so they, they would so shut, shut up. up. <laughs> and so if they if they find out, oh, I can actually sell triple the amount of comics. I can actually make it so that the number one selling comic book this month or this week isn't 125 copies or 125,000 copies. It's 425,000 copies. Mm -hmm. Like, oh shit. Now the comic book industry, DC and Marvel, they're like, I don't give a shit about Rick and right. Mortars. If you can triple our audience, yeah, then we'll let you sell, destroy the yeah, industry. Because we'll you you're going to be selling the floppies. Yeah. 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 I have an idea as to why it's only Marvel, and I think it's because of how Comixology obtains the licenses for the books that they get. It's a possibility that the, since they're different companies, that they're getting a, like, a solid rate from Marvel to mm -hmm. get all yeah. their books, right. and they're getting a percentage uh, that gets kicked back to DC or certain prices for certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why they're contract. Yeah, which is why it's probably easier for them to be like, no, could be all Marvel or yeah. a certain Marvel, like a oh, dollar. Yeah. That could very well happen with DC. Possible. Yeah, no question. Or they'd see a cut. I, I was gonna say it probably has to do with the fact that uh, Marvel just had back to back movies. Yes. Yeah. So That's we saw also possible, we saw the man. the sale happen what two months ago Black Panther. Yeah. Yeah. The Black There's Panther more sale. Buzz, and now perhaps. and now Infinity War's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to do a special DC sale. Deadpool's coming out. And then Deadpool. Like literally, yeah. like this is a strategic like decision based on what is going to be talked about the most in the like everyday pop culture sphere yeah, yeah. that isn't well, just comic book. The good news is we can get confirmation when the next big Disney movie comes out if they yeah if they do another thing, discount that yeah. would argue strongly for that yeah. So yeah, let's find out. Yeah, let's let's Look revisit. Forward. That's your homework. <laughs> What's the next big <laughs> DC uh, movie? Next big DC movie. <laughs> Big one? <laughs> no time soon. I think Aquaman, Aquaman. is next. Hey, I'm excited. I'm for I want to see it. I just, just after the Justice League movie we got, Aquaman looks fun. Uh, I, here's the thing. I think the DC Universe movies are dead, mm -hmm. and I think that it's like Aquaman and Shazam, and then ah, and I think maybe Suicide Squad too. But like every yeah. after that, it's it's anyone's game and. Comixology would not be smart if they hung their hat on their pricing initiatives based on those movies. Sure, but no. if they're just sitting waiting for the opportunity to do this thing mm -hmm. with DC, they, like if they yeah. want to do it at all, they gotta they gotta wait. They gotta the pick DC one movie. of these moments. Well, or the premiere of the Teen Titans show, right? Something maybe. It would be interesting if they discounted both to see like, all right, well, right now there's a big push for Marvel. Yeah. Even if we discount DC, how many people are gonna go? Yeah, for that I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do but that only didn't. because they couldn't do a sample size. Like then it's like, well, I, I don't actually know how big the audience right, is for there DC wasn't enough because buzz there wasn't enough buzz, and yeah. and there and everyone was so busy buying Marvel trades that like they didn't mm -hmm. even notice the DC sale, or yeah. like people were just like, well, yeah, maybe there will be a DC sale like this later. I'm not gonna buy DC trades right now. Yeah. Like, so I, I was smart for that. Do. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would sit if I was a DC fan and just with Colin Salji, I'd sit on it and mm -hmm. wait for them to discount. Those books are dollars. Yeah. It doesn't look good for retailers. No. Um, uh, no. And, like, they'll have to find a way to adapt, and there's no easy way to do it, so it's like... And now they're going against Amazon, effectively. Yeah, basically and Amazon they is thought declared... it was hard before. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know in the comments section down below, what is the future of comic book retail? Let us know in the comments down below. We look forward to continuing the conversation there, and we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Comic Line. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks for watching.